against the Browns and Packers on Christmas Day. Green Bay's won the last three meetings, but can Cleveland cross a win off their wish list? Find out next. The tundra may not quite be frozen, but it's getting there as we work our way through December. The radar today, however, is clear at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. We all know this community lives for its Packers, and the green and gold came out of the tunnel a short time ago, and it was loud. We are ready for football, so are they, as the Packers get set to match up with the Cleveland Browns. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. as he gets set to lead this Green Bay Packer offense. Rodgers now in his 17th season in the league and, of course, coming off the MVP trophy. Would you say that last week's performance by him, workmanlike in terms yeah. of numbers? One touchdown, one pick, but obviously a loss. Yeah, and that's the bottom line for him. All he cares about is how do we find a way to win the game. Maybe leans on a few other parts of the offense and hopefully springs a receiver or two free. Now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron Jones. Still fighting for more. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him the first down. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. Here's a first and 10 at the 38. Jones. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Well, this defense for the Browns, they played really well in the win over the Raiders a week ago. And what keyed their victory? The pass rush. Got to the quarterback six times for sacks and plenty of other turbulence in the pocket for him as well. Hard to throw the ball downfield, but all you're seeing is opposing jerseys come at you. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. Caught on the right side by Jones. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Five yards, and that means they come up short as they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. And that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. On fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. He punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And the Browns will take over first and 10. And for the first time, here comes the Cleveland Browns offense. 
Quarterbacked by Baker Mayfield, fourth-year man from Oklahoma. And he ought to have a lot of pep in his step after last week's performance because he did exactly as you want him to play if you're a coach. Three touchdown passes, zero interceptions, which usually means you're making a lot of right decisions out there. And got him the win. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 16. And that closed up quickly there as he gets it up only to about the 17. A check on the numbers for Chubb from a week ago. Two trips to the end zone and well past 100 yards. And going back and watching the film, we saw every kind of run from him, didn't we? We saw some power. We saw finesse. We saw speed. And what I love the most, he finished each and every run. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Play fake. Mayfield. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? When they've needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver it. As this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. The big play has him all the way out near midfield for a first and ten. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb, and he'll get it down here to the 43. A lot of running backs, a little bit of a disadvantage when you start talking MVP. Might not be the case this year. You think he's got a shot, don't you? I do. I think he's got more than a shot, but what he's going to need here down the stretch this late in the season he needs that big closing game, that game that we're all going to reflect on and go, oh, my goodness, did he put up a number? Let's say 200 plus. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout, and we will. We've got an injured Packer on the field. Not something you want to see in Week 16 or any week, really. We'll be right back. First carry now for Kareem Hunt. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. The drive stays alive. A third down gain of eight. That's about what you would expect since they're so efficient on picking up third downs in the top five in the NFL. It's all a mindset. And I guarantee you, it started in the offseason. Third down's important to them. They find a way to pick them up with a very good clip. And he's taken down inside the 30. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down couple of nice carries back to back here establishing the ground game a bit yeah these aren't bare bones runs now i mean they're getting substantial yardage the kind of yards you're looking for right let's go ahead and use a cliche stay ahead of the change right five more five or more yards each time that's what you're looking for in setting a tone and getting your offensive line going good sign on the opening drive First down, they'll run with Hunt. A gain of three, second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Odell Beckham, touchdown number 15 of the year. And the Browns have taken the early lead on the road here at Lambeau. One of the keys to their long winning streak has been scoring first. An ideal drive right there, getting the first six points of the ball game. Do you go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator on oh, yeah. what he told us? Absolutely. With some teams, I script to probe in the early part of the game. Other teams, I script to attack. They've been in attack mode for these ball games and continue that in this one. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland.
The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Rodgers will bring the pack up with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. And he'll begin the drive with a give to Jones. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. The linebacker, Jeremiah Wusu koromoa on the tackle. A second and 10, a very chilly day here, but no snow. And I got to say, if it's going to be this cold, I want snow. <laughs> you should see Charles' face. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. 13 yards, first down, Packers. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Back for the second quarter in Green Bay. It's the Packers in possession of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. Rodgers with a give. It's Aaron Jones. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Here we go. Well, if they continue to run the football this strong right up the middle, I don't know if they can wait till halftime to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out, bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right at them and right up the middle. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. And this one too low. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well. And that one's incomplete. From midfield, here's Rodgers. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Here's J.K. Scott now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. that time on the punt and the Browns will take over with a first and ten deep in their own territory second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense last time they were out here they had the benefit of good field position led to a touchdown this time they're gonna have to work for it they are but with that last drive that culminated in touchdown I think they carry that confidence into this one doesn't matter where you start with the football now they have to feel great about their opportunity and not much to speak of call it a one-yard gain up to the 15 just a yard on the pickup there and it'll bring up a second and nine A give. This is Chubb. Chubb will have the first down and much more. He's got the lane, and there he goes. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb, touchdown number 22 on the season. And the Browns are able to strike quickly for six. And Nick Chubb, about as dynamic a runner as the NFL has to offer. He put his talents on full display there. That was some kind of run. And that's why he's one of the best running backs in the game today, because this run combined all the elements. Started with patience, and he was just waiting for the right lane to materialize. Then once he saw it, he used his speed and escapability in tandem and turned this into a tremendous play. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. 
It only took him two plays there to find the end zone. The last one, the long run, getting him in for six points. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And he'll just take a seat in the driver to get it to 25-yard line. Here's Aaron Jones in the offense trotting back out. And he's closing in on that number that all running backs circled beginning of the year, the number 1,000. Could do it on this drive. And you have to think to yourself that this moment, getting to this spot, it started in the offseason, right? Not just the workouts, right? Not just getting yourself physically prepared to play, but mentally, as well as your team, as well as your unit, head coach, offensive coordinator. We run the football. We give you opportunities. He's taking advantage of it. And when you get this close to the mark, you just hope things don't tighten up, right? You probably want to get the... And it's a Packers touchdown! Robert Tunyon, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Packers are able to strike quickly for six. Well, for a tight end, he can definitely motor, and he shows off the wheels there after the catch as he's able to shake free. Yeah, and this just looked like a simple, ordinary play to start, but boy, did things change. Once he got free, it was off to the races, and once he hit high gear, there's absolutely no one who was going to stop him. And you can see the distance traveled there after the catch on the next-gen stats. On is Mason Crosby for the point after. And that one makes it 14-7. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. So the Packer kickoff team set to go as they will kick this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Now on the return here, we've got an injured player down there. Not something you want to see in week 16 or any week, really. We'll be right back. The Browns drive about to get started. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. 126 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ball game. One thing that's great about watching him run, Charles, he doesn't hesitate. He got to the left side of his own line and just went. So there's two ways to look at that. One, just absolutely unconcerned, just takes off and goes. But more the latter, I think, which is he has absolute confidence in the guys in front of him, the guys doing the blocking for him. He just takes it and goes with abandon. A run for Nick Chubb. Muscles him off. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big time run. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. So retract the yardage and retract the touchdown. And retract the chunk play. Big strike there to get the touchdown. Now they've got to take it back and see if they've got another one still in their arsenal. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. They'll roll him out right. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And this is caught for a Browns touchdown by Landry. Jarvis Landry, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Browns add six to their lead. If you didn't know it, it won't surprise you to find out that this team leads the league in scoring. They've been a quick strike team all season long. 
There's another example. They did it again. This offensive coordinator, right now you can write his ticket towards being a head coach. He's advanced in the ways of offense. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. The Browns' kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Here's Aaron Jones in the offense trotting back out. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. On second and seven, Rodgers drops it to Jones in the flat. First down and much more here for Jones. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. That's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Now Rodgers throwing on second down. A check down here to Jones. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Throwing now is Rodgers. And able to find Alan Lazard. And he's going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now it's Rodgers. Rodgers teaming up with Lazard there for a Packer first down. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Throwing again on second down. Rodgers. He finds Randall Cobb with a completion. Rodgers to Cobb. Good for a Green Bay first. Again, they'll throw with Rodgers. And he'll let this go deep for Lazard. Tried to drop it in there, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And he's going to have the first down as they move into field goal range here at the 25-yard line. And that's what we've seen from this defense all year long because they've been so good at finding ways to take the football away. And they just gave us another example right here. A strong defense, that's something you're going to need to rely on come playoff time. And this crew has got one. There's no doubt about that, Brandon. Now Nick Chubb and the Browns get set for their next possession. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep well, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. And he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. Mayfield on play action. Rolling to his right. His throw incomplete. He was looking for Odell Beckham that time. And it's third day. And off comes to Chubb. Runs over him. And he will get him down a couple yards shy of the first down marker. A nice tackle coming up from his free safety spot. And how about the call here? They need two yards in their own territory on fourth down, and they're going to go for it. Mayfield gives this one to Hunt. Oh, what a move. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. 
And the drive stays in motion with a nice eight-yard pickup on fourth. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Escaping, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Second and 15. Another try after the first down sack. Mayfield. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. Final play of the half, Mayfield. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. And this is caught inside the five. And he's in for the touchdown on the final play of the first half. The prayer is answered. How did they get that done? And they extend their lead, a little added cushion into the lockers. What a way to finish. Tremendous way. That's momentum that they carry in with them. Can they convert it and bring it back out to start the third quarter? McLaughlin for the extra point. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. So we've reached halftime here. Charles has already thrown off his headset. He's out here. He says, it's Christmas Day. I'm going home. We're not done yet, though. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome in, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around the NFL. Some great games coming up this weekend. Two on Christmas Day. Cleveland traveling up to Lambeau to take on the Packers. And then later, Indianapolis taking on Arizona. In the late afternoon games, it'll be loud in Kansas City. That's for sure, as it'll be the Chiefs taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. And finally, on Monday Night Football, no Ricky Williams, but it is the Dolphins and the Saints to wrap up Week 16 from the Caesar Superdome in New Orleans. On now to a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for the Browns. And they've had their way running the football well over 100 yards already as a team, with two more quarters still to come. Meanwhile, for the Packers, the rushing numbers tell a different story. They really couldn't get a whole lot going on the ground. And the evidence? The numbers. These two teams going through their final adjustments. It's about time for the second half in Green Bay. So for the call, we go back up to Lambeau and Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. And a nice return sets them up pretty good here right on, at the 30-yard line. The Browns offense heading out as we take a look at the playoff picture in the AFC. Well, we do know, Charles, they will be in the playoffs. They currently sit at point position number one, but nothing set in stone right now. They still have to earn that top spot. And it makes me reflect back to preseason when you and I do our tours of camps. The prevailing message in each and every one of them was what? Win the division. Win the division. Win the division. You know you're in the playoffs. It means something. It might mean it means a home game. It means a number of other things, but winning the division is paramount. You're right. They won't step off the gas here. Mayfield gonna lead the Browns up now. First and ten, right at the 30. They'll start the third quarter on the ground with Hunt. And he's got a good gain of seven up to the 37. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. It's Landry now on the end around, And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Not your conventional play call, but that's okay. You probe the defense a little bit with some of everything in your playbook. That way they have to account for everything as the game moves on. Mayfield off the play fake. He's got a man. It's his fullback. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Let's go. 
It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. On the ground, it's Chubb. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Third quarter action here on Christmas Day. Hope everyone's having a blessed holiday season. Second and 10 right now. Eluding the pressure right. He completes it to Beckham. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. That's the number two receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage. And tell you what, a few more plays like that, he won't be number two for long. Well, that's what often happens when you have competitors running around the field. These guys know where they stand in relationship to yardage, totals, numbers, the whole deal. And let's face it, all of them, they all want to be number one. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Dumps this to his running back, Chubb. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. That catch good for only a couple. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more. Oh, Chubb fumbled it. And the Packers pick it up. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, number one on the list of things not to do when you're up three scores in the third. That right there, give the football away. I love when you speak like that. You know how doctors talk about taking the Hippocratic oath, first do no harm? You just did the football Hippocratic one right there. Don't give the ball away when you have a lead that you can lock this game down with. So here are the Packers now. They get set for their first possession of half number two. And they just got a little help from their defense forcing the turnover. Now can they make that payoff in points? They need to, partner. They're down on the scoreboard. Need to take advantage of those opportunities. And this is a good one right in front of them. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After a huge play, rolling on the field is reversed. So that challenge, a successful one. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. And Kevin Stefanski going to take a chance going for it on fourth. They run for it with Hunt. Trucks over him. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. They'll run with Chubb, and he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Nick Chubb with touchdown number 23 here on the year. And the Browns take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. So the toss play effective, even down here near the goal line. Yeah, and you're hoping the defense commits too many men to stop the run in the middle of the field and that your blockers can gain it a little bit of an advantage. And when they do, foot race to the pylon, and this time, he had the speed to win that race. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 28. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Packers offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. 
finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Rodgers will break the huddle and bring the pack up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll begin the drive with a run by Dillon. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. A good gain on first. Has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Again, it's Dillon. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Looking for an opening, not much there. He'll get oh, it to yeah. the 39. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. Not something you want to see in week 16 or any week, really. We'll be right back. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Rogers going to throw. Got an open man. It's Valdez Scantling. First target, first catch, and a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. Dylan now on first and 10. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. We are off to the fourth quarter here on this special Christmas Day broadcast. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now at Lambeau. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Now Rodgers. Now look out, Rodgers lost the football. But it looked like a Packer. Yeah, a Packer was able to get this back, and they'll indeed keep possession. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. Now Rodgers. That's complete to the former Aggie, Jay Sternberger. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Now that's gonna be a tough one to explain when they get together to watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call, had the out route. He's gotta know where the first down sticks are, yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. All right, they're gonna try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now Rodgers, gotta have this one. Able to find Lazard. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. But no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down. Trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. He stopped to get it done, as you noted. And they did. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete and brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. A good-looking drive for the Packers so far. It's a first down. And again, it's Rodgers. To the tight end and complete. It's Sternberger over the middle. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Give him nine there on the first down completion. To throw again on second down. Rodgers. And he's got his man. Touchdown, Green Bay. It's Alan Lazard. Alan Lazard, his second touchdown on the season. And the Packers get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit.
Point try now for Crosby. It's good, and it's now 35-14. So that one a long 11-play drive, and it ends with a Packers touchdown. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! There's Baker Mayfield as he and the Browns' offense comes back out. And a trio of touchdown passes so far. They've got the lead as well. All is good in their football world at this point. And it's so much fun for our colleagues, right? Think about our producer, our director, everyone putting together these shots. Wouldn't you love to be in the truck right now and hear him calling for it? Give me that one, give me that one, give me that one. And we just saw three beautiful touchdown passes. Now he's looking for four. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. Solid running on the carry, but still brought down just inside of the 40. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Two straight runs of five yards, first and ten. First down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. They find some open field here. And all the way in, touchdown, oh, yeah. Cleveland. Cool, Nick Chubb with another touchdown, number 24 on the year. And the Browns extend their fourth quarter lead, and they are closing in now on a 14-win campaign. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 28. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. And they unfortunately are staring at a mini losing streak developing, trailing here in the fourth quarter. This would be their third straight defeat. Rodgers will bring the pack up with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. To throw is Rodgers. Making the catch is Sternberger. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Seven yards to pick up there. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. It's complete, Lazard. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out, to the sideline, and make a catch. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I think this offense, specifically this running game, they're going to have to find a way to turn the page because they haven't found a way to run it effectively thus far, and it's cost them. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. Rodgers on target there to Lazard. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts. As they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. And for the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. Throwing is Rodgers. 
Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns defense has a touchdown. Now remember, this is the number one defense in the National Football League. There's a good example of why. Shows that they set an aggressive tone, not just stopping the run, not just getting after the quarterback, but the ball's in the air. They treat it like they're the receivers, and they went after that one and took it all the way. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good, and that will extend this big lead. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. The Packer offense now ready to get back onto the field. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory, not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because... There are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now, and if they call plays they want executed, they need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waning moments of this one. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. To throw on second and 10, Rodgers. Pass hauled in by the 6'4 tight end Sternberger. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Here's Rodgers. And Rodgers intercepted a third time. Picked up by Denzel Ward. The utter domination here just continues. This defense, I don't know what more we can say all around about their performance. Well, it certainly feels in this game like maybe they're facing a Canadian defense. 12 guys on the <laughs> field. It feels like there's an extra on every snap because they have really struggled to make headway through the air. Odell Beckham now marching back onto the field. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Boy, 203 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Browns, it's another win for them. And you wonder if they want a redo on that one loss as they sit now at 14-1. and one. And they'll get another road date next week as their opponents will be the Pittsburgh Steelers. Meanwhile, for Green Bay, they'll be guaranteed a finish of no better than 500 as they drop to 7-8. And they'll get a home date next week against the Minnesota Vikings.